Welcome, in front of me is a Samsung Galaxy S22 and today I will show you how you can go to the setup process of this phone. Now I'll mention before I get started that I already did do the initial setup of the phone so it does change the process just a tiny bit. Uh, those differences will be number one I can skip out connecting to Wi-Fi. Number two I don't need to on the next page connect uh, or not connect but uh, reboot the device for uh, I don't know some provider bullshit reasons because there is really no reason to reboot the device especially with what they say about like provider considering i don't have any sim card in there so what provider and number three i won't need to go through the 10 minute long uh checking for updates page so there we go those are the key differences now let's get started everything else like i mentioned should be roughly the same i'll point out in the parts where i get there what should be different for you assuming your device is completely brand new if it's not then chances are you will see the you'll have the same experience as i do right now so anyway let's tap on the start button and then find our desired language for me it's going to be english and this brings us to the next page which is connect to mobile network so you can uh, access network by either inserting your sim card which you can do it here or on the next page, it doesn't really matter, or by connecting to Wi-Fi. So if you choose to skip this, you won't be able to skip the Wi-Fi. And if you decide to insert your SIM card, I, I assume you can then skip a Wi-Fi connection. Now, for me, I can skip both, so that's what I'm gonna do. Anyway, on the next page, we have for your review, we have end user license agreement, which you do need to agree to. You can also tap on details to read exactly what you're agreeing to. So there we go. But at the end of the day, you need to select that checkbox and then select next. Permissions for Samsung apps and services. So here we just have a bunch of uh, permissions for uh, the default apps from Samsung. Personally, I would probably disable all of them. Mm, there's quite a lot. In the typical usage, I would just disable all of them if I would be actually utilizing this phone myself, but uh, I'm not gonna bother here. The reason for this is uh, I'm not planning to use majority of Samsung apps just because a decent chunk of them has a better alternative in Google. So that's what I'll be using. So those apps for me have no business knowing anything on my phone uh, because I won't be even needing them. And if I encounter some kind of app that will need access to whatever it is that it's gonna need access to, it's gonna give me a pop-up uh, asking for that access. And then on the go, I can decide if I want to grant that application access to it or not. So that's what I would do. Obviously, I can keep this on if you're planning to use uh, all the Samsung apps, and if you don't, maybe you want to do the same thing as I would normally do. Anyway, once you disable or keep them enabled and navigate to the next page, you will be taken to the Wi-Fi connection page. So as you can see, I can skip it, which can see the button right over here, but if you have a brand new device, chances are uh, you don't see the skip button. So you need to most likely connect to your Wi-Fi or insert a SIM card. I'll be skipping it uh, just because it does save a little bit on time. And by skipping it, I do also uh, lose the page where I can log into the Google account, though I can still do that later on after the setup has been completed by going into the settings and accounts and then adding a Google account from there. Anyway, next page here, I have copy apps and data. Uh, which allows you just to restore your device from an old backup or maybe just move over the data from a phone that you're currently using to this one. I'll be setting it up as new, so I'm just simply gonna select don't copy. But obviously if you want to move over data, you want to select the next, which will give you a guide on what you need to do. Now, again, if you didn't, uh, if you had, had to connect to the network, uh, you won't see this page. Uh, this is only if you have zero network, it asks uh, about adjusting the date and time uh, because it has no way of accessing the internet to know if the time is correct so you can fix it up but if you're planning to connect to your network later on uh, you can just disregard this it will be automatically fixed up once you do so then we have google services so we have location scanning and sending a user and diagnostic data quickly going into all three of them uh, location is just a GPS tracking, so apps like Google Maps can give you an accurate route to your destination. Then allow scanning allows the device to look for signals like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And then below that we have send user and diagnostic data, which uh, basically means that you allow Google to gather data on you, uh, aka spy on you. And this takes us to the next page, which is uh, protect your phone. 
Now we have a couple of ways of protecting our phone, uh, being fingerprint, face recognition, pen pattern or password. Now if you're planning to use uh, either one of the two, uh, top one, so fingerprint or face recognition, you will always be required to set up a physical way of unlocking the device, that'd be a pattern, pin, or password. Uh, the reason for that is if something would happen to your fingerprint or maybe your face or just the sensors on here that are responsible for unlocking it, you still have some other way of accessing the device, be through pin, pattern, or password. Now for this, I'll only set up a pattern right here. So let me draw the pattern. Next, repeat that pattern and confirm, and this will set it up. And as you can see, uh, we have here a Samsung account. Now, <clears throat> the uh, the appearance of this is absolutely stupid, considering I have no internet connection, so if I would want to connect to my Samsung account, it would backtrack me to Wi-Fi connection. Because why would you put this in a logical place? No, I just better waste my time. Uh, and additionally, uh, if you're planning to use Google for the most part, uh, this message right here is absolutely just laughable to me. So skip out on all this, like it's some uh, majestic uh, one-of-a-kind applications, uh, not like, you know, it's plagiarized from Google or anything. Now, to quickly like, validate what I mean, uh, I'm gonna go over all of these things and basically give you an alternative which has been out for longer and most likely works better. So we have Samsung Cloud, Google Cloud, Bixby, Hey Google, Galaxy Team, Entire Play Store, Find My Mobile, Find My Device, Samsung Pass, uh, Google Passwords, uh, though I don't think it has a specific name. Uh, we have Galaxy Store, again, the entirety of a Play Store, and Secure Folder. Now, the Secure Folder might be the only useful thing here, but if you aren't planning to password protect your uh, folders uh, just so no one can access it, uh, this makes no difference to you. And additionally, I'll also mention that Galaxy Store will sometimes have apps that aren't accessible on the Play Store. As a uh, example, right on top of my head, we have a couple Samsung uh, developed apps that are used on Samsung's only. I don't recall what they're called, but they're just like some weird features, uh, maybe beta features that you can just install on your device and utilize. And additionally, you have, for instance, uh, standalone applications like Alliance Shield X, which, well, well actually, uh, wouldn't be accurate because you can download Alliance Shield X on Play Store now anyways. So I guess that won't uh, really count. So yeah, uh, anyway, as you can see, majority of these features right here, if you can even call them features, uh, are just completely useless to most of us. And if you aren't already deep in the Samsung ecosystem uh, with like cloud backing up to their servers and utilizing their whatever they have, Honestly, there is no reason to do this because majority of the Android devices run on Android, meaning Google. Uh, so for you to get stuck in this kind of ecosystem uh, by just choosing to do so is not very logical. If you're planning to later on change your phone to maybe some other brand. So I'll be skipping this uh, now and basically every time I can. And anyway, as you can see, this finishes up the setup. So let's select finish right here and we should be presented with our home screen now. And there it is. So, if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.